on. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a uh, timed fire um, using a flint and steel and um, jute twine as the uh, main ignition source and tinder. Um, it'll be a squall wood fire, and we're going to shoot for waist high fire in under four minutes or under five minutes. The only thing we've done to prepare is we just have a sight and um, I have prepared the uh, jute twine um, tinder bundle <coughs> right here and other than that um, this is all totally live so it uh, looks like we've got 10, 10 06 and 30 seconds roughly so we'll see how long it takes doing this you're looking for the ones with a lot of the little smaller twigs and stuff you don't really want to go for the onesies and twosies because they're not going to have the pencil size kindling that you're looking for and if they don't snap right off then forget about it and move to the next one This right here is the uh, Ashland Sasquatch. He doesn't know that, but he is. So if you're looking for Bigfoot, his name's JJ. Very rare sighting. You got everything you need? Come on. A couple minutes, okay. I'm also going to grab some of this cedar bark here. That's just going to help out my tinder bundle a little bit. Provided it's dry. Oh. Process that up a little bit. Ready to put on. Let's get the tinder going. Put the bigger stuff on one side. Okay, we're getting close to five minutes, I think. Okay.
fender. We have just a flint and steel gloves off. I don't have any char cloth, so we'll see how this is going to work. If we can get the actual flint and steel to make enough spark to ignite the jute twine, it might be a failure. <laughs> Who knows? may have to uh, resort to using a ferro rod. We saw a couple sparks there. Yeah, it's just if we can get to catch it. Since it's not charred material, it's a lot harder to get going. These sparks just don't burn long enough. All right, well, doesn't look like we're gonna get it with the uh, flint and steel, so we'll just go with the uh, ferro rod for sake of time. What time we start? 10.06. So we're at uh, eight minutes or so, something like that. We'll just use this. I think this is kind of cheating, but scrape off the newness. Still got that coating on it. There we go. Should have brought some meat. Shoot something. <laughs> Let's see if that'll get going. Nice little fire going there, JJ. If you were out surviving, that would definitely make you feel better about life. It's warm too. <laughs> Is it today? 15 degrees out? Yeah. I was hoping we'd get that jute twine to ignite, but uh, I don't think it puts up quite enough spark. Did 
JJ, I'd say you're pretty close to being there, bud. Are we way south? Yeah, you're... Almost? That, that's... Probably, uh... Yeah. Stand over there by it. Yeah, you're pretty close. I'd say we're at waist high now. Yeah. Good, sure. respectable fire. Cool, what time is it? So, 10. Burn me up. And we got 10, 16. So, right on the dot, 10 minutes. So, not bad considering I wasted three or four minutes screwing with the, uh, screwing with the, uh, flint and steel. I never really screw with that stuff much aside from using charred cloth, so I thought I'd try to give it a try and see if, uh, see if it could catch spark in jute twine, but it didn't look like it did, so. You were only about two minutes from having a viable fire once you switched over to the... Yeah, yeah, to, it, to the, it was pretty fast when you used a ferro rod. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, that's kind of a good point to a lesson, I guess, is, uh, for me, playing with a flint and steel like we are today, or like we did today, was is good for when you're out screwing around and you just want to have fun and, you know, you're kind of... You're not in an emergency situation or anything like that, but for real wilderness survival type things, carry a freaking big lighter or matches or a ferro rod, and uh, that feels good. It does feel nice, <laughs> doesn't it? And uh, and use something like that that you know is going to work. You know, I mean, trying to rely on a flint and steel or, or charred cloth or whatever the case may be in an actual survival situation is kind of silly and foolhardy. The reason it's good to know those principles, though, and those things is because if you don't have anything, you find yourself with nothing, then if you can find an old piece of steel, old piece of junk somewhere, something like that, you know, and you know that you can find a, a rock, you know, that, that'll, that'll make a spark with it. They say a rock with a hardness of higher than seven. I don't know how the hell you'd tell that in the field other than just trying it, um, you know, unless you know quartz or granite or whatever the case may be, but bottom line is, is Learning those bushcraft techniques like flint and steel and stuff like that really are most useful for situations where you just don't have anything else and you're trying to improvise something. And so you learn those techniques to be able to use it with stuff you can find in the woods. Primarily though, a fire steel or a, a ferrule rod and a, uh, a little knife, even a stainless steel blade one like this, it's going to work great for getting a fire going out in the woods. So I recommend keeping one around. Oh. And we have these for sale on the website if you want to <laughs> take a look there too. So, anyhow, just a little fire while we're out playing around. So, everybody uh, stay safe out there and have fun.